Welcome to part 8 of our Clone Wars rewrite. We are currently rewriting the character of Ahsoka Tano, and in this video we'll be focusing on Season 1, Episode 17 to 18, Blue Shadow Virus and Mystery of a Thousand Moons, where we'll be showing how being a child soldier is affecting Ahsoka, and having I'd Padme probably... teach her it's okay to be afraid, and help her come to terms with self-sacrifice. Thank you for joining us. All right, we are on season one, episode 17, The Blue Shadow Virus. Other than noting that Ahsoka is suddenly magically competent and super mature and selfless in this arc, we mentioned that in this episode, Ahsoka guilt trips Anakin and acts like everything revolves around her when he asks about Padme. So I'm sure there's stuff we missed because as the last episode we analyzed proved, we missed stuff. Fear is a disease. Hope is its only cure. That's not accurate. No. In most cases, it's love that cures fear. I think it depends on the context. I think it does, but I think there's a lot more stuff that can cure fear than just hope. Yeah, I agree. That statement is inaccurate and we will not acknowledge it. Okay. We did a robo-lobotomy on the battle droids and came up with this piece of memory. Robo-lobotomy. <laughs> Good news, my soulless automaton friend! <laughs> Love the way this guy talks. This the ship belonging to them. So where are they? Their tracks end here. Peppy, it's a scope. Don't let them see you. I feel like that entire scene was not necessarily bad, but just very... Oh, obvious statement. Obvious statement. Obvious statement. See, it's one of those things that it, it's like... I mean, Legolas does it too. A lot of people pointed out that many of Legolas's lines are... Obvious statement. Obvious statement. And so it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's not necessarily like, Oh, this is a bad character because of these reasons, but it, it definitely makes for weaker interactions. If you can kind of like brainstorm how to improve the dialogue, because do they really need to be talking about what they're seeing if they're both seeing it? Are you there? Did you find her? Negative. I'm pretty sure she's inside the lab. I need you to detonate a bunker bomb at the south end of the facility. It should cause a nice distraction and seal off the bomb area. While we come in through the hatches. It just seems weird that like they send off Ahsoka and the Gungan and they just wait back here for her to say whether she found Padme or not. And then it's like, oh, you didn't find her? Well, okay, now we're going to go and attack the, the bunker. It's like, what, wouldn't you be ready to do that already? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Because if, if they did find Padme, would that have changed their plan to, you know, go into the bunker and stop the guy who's trying to destroy entire systems? No? Oh, why are they just waiting? Maybe they were waiting for the clones. I don't know, it's weird. Using the force! Yay! Oh yeah, so I did mention this because it, that moment there, the droidicas show up, and she's like, fall back, like, right away. Like, we can't, oh, can't do this. And in the very next episode, the exact same thing happens. Two droidicas roll up and start shooting at them with their shields, and she just effortlessly leaps over them, expertly, like, cuts them to shreds. And, you know, this is after she's, like, been infected and she's showing signs of weakening. Whereas this moment right here, that just happened, she's perfectly healthy. That seems incredibly convenient. Need some help? Oh, so good to see you, Master Kenobi. The bomb has been deactivated. Did you find Vindy? Deactivated as well. Have you seen Padme? She's right next to me. I'm okay too. Thanks for asking. Uh, probably um, just get rid of the line. Yeah, it makes no sense that she, she, uh, thanks for asking. 
like, um, okay, he can tell you're fine. You literally just told him that, you know, like you just reported that everything's good and you sound fine. He's just asking about Padme and, oh, why aren't you asking about me? Yeah, so like she shows up very little and for like, it's just kind of weird that she follows orders without, you know, talking back and she just goes along with everything and she's just like, it's just odd because she's just there rather than in all the other episodes where she features, she's being Ahsoka. So how would we change it though, right? Because we've been trying to make her behave better, but still maintain that, like right now she's, she's, she's headstrong and kind of cocky, but not disrespectful. Like, would we add any moments or perhaps tweak some of her moments to kind of like show that she is still who she is? instead of she's just there i would i would maybe have her having a conversation with the the gungan when they're looking for padme and jar jar and maybe have her asking the gungan some questions and it's not about fleshing out the gungan as a character it's about you know showing that ahsoka is interested in another person and then when they see the ship then they they quiet down right like so you would have to start the scene a little bit earlier than them finding the ship um but you wouldn't have to have it like a whole five minutes it would just you know 30 seconds they're in the middle of a conversation they see the ship and the i'm sorry i don't remember the gungan's name but like she points out like oh that's the ship they came in and then their conversation changes it gets quiet and then uh probably when obi-wan shows up when she's having trouble with the uh, the droidicas, maybe put a little bit of banter in there. Need some help? Oh, so good to see you, Master Kenobi. She could jokingly say like, "Oh, I had it handled," <laughs> right? So you can tell that she she's not saying it like, "Oh, I had it handled," because we want to show that kind of like cocky side of her, but it's not disrespectful. So she's she's thanking him without thanking him. Hard pressed Jedi and their valiant clone troopers. I just notice how they, they open it with Ahsoka's cool moments and then you don't even see Obi-Wan or Anakin really clearly until like the end of the recap. Oh wow, I didn't even pick up on that. Oh. Maybe it's nothing, but it's it's just kind of like they open with saying, oh, you know, the Jedi saved the day and it's Ahsoka that you're seeing. Uh. Let's take this limo back to feed so we can help Padme and Ahsoka clean up down there. Insults. That's one thing that um, I actually have been trying to like come up with in my story. Insults that tell you about the character and about the world, right? Because um, if you're if you're writing a, a fantasy world or, or, or something like this, I guess this is more sci-fi than fantasy. But um, it's really important that little language quirks like insults and swearing and uh even i would say compliments and uh uh things like that if you can kind of like do plays on the real world versions or like so that people can immediately recognize it as what it is supposed to be and a part of that is context or the the implied tone that the character is speaking in sometimes it's uh implied by the reaction of the characters hearing it but um there's a lot of of interesting flavor that you can add through dialogue by having these these language quirks that are unique to your your setting and uh in the prequels we heard young anakin calling you know people slimo and so that they bring it back now i i do appreciate that don't worry I kind of wanted to say that moment of Ahsoka holding the door open for the clones is a great moment of self-sacrifice on her part. Yeah, I was actually, uh, when that was going on, thinking about uh, in Jedi Crash, when Anakin does something very similar. And that is actually because of the the chronological order of those episodes. You could even say that because we're actually fixing her character, so she's actually learning from Anakin, 
that that is a moment of her learning from Anakin. I wouldn't give them credit for that in this version because, as we've pointed out, there are so many other things that she doesn't learn from Anakin that I would highly doubt that this would be a moment of her learning from Anakin, and more so it's just them trying to pad her character because she's suddenly so great in these episodes. And the downside is, is that later on when she and Barris are dying. Yeah, then suddenly she's like not self-sacrificial. So it doesn't make sense in the current version, but in our fixed version, I would say that you're right, that moment where she uh, she sacrifices or and endangers herself for the clones, that's a really good moment. Yep. It has sealed off the entire facility. Yes, but any remaining droids will try to break out. I'll do what I can to stop them. I cannot let that virus escape. And that's a moment of uh, Padme's character that, like, I really like. She's not just concerned about herself. She's concerned about the bigger picture. And she will do whatever it takes to take care of things. Yay, Padme. Fastest way to save Senator Amidala and Ahsoka is to get Vindy back to the capital and find an actual antidote. I love how they only mention Padme and Ahsoka, and not all the clones, and not Jar Jar. <sighs> oh dear. I feel like, sorry for those clones, sense. man! But like, it's one of those interesting things though, that even the Jedi kind of treat the clones as cannon fodder. Yeah. And it's really disappointing. I guess it, it is intentional on the writer's part. It does go to show that yeah, the Jedi are not infallible. The Jedi are not like, oh, we're so great and wonderful and flawless. It's like, no, they have a lot of flaws. They got quite a few skeletons in their closet. Yes. Well, you read the comic I sent you, the the story of Zane yes, Carrick, where it. they slaughter all the Padawans because they're paranoid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, that was just... a Jedi sect, if you will. But yeah, they told themselves they were doing the right thing. And uh, no, I'm sorry, that, that is not the right thing to do. And so we're we're in, in no way trying to say that the Jedi are perfect. But uh, if you're going to compare Ahsoka as she is to the Jedi, then I'm sorry, Ahsoka is not what the Jedi should be. She's as bad, if not worse than them as she is currently. She's and definitely worse. Even though the Jedi do make mistakes, their behavior toward her in season five is completely logical. But we'll get to that when we're 72 years old and we're finally on season five of our- <laughs> Don't worry. My master will find a cure for this virus. We're not dead yet. Are you contaminated? <laughs> I'm afraid so. Her tone and body language feel off there. Yeah, I mean, like, her comment about um, trusting that Anakin will have a cure for them, I, I like that moment. But then, yeah, at the end there, when she's, I'm afraid so. And, yeah, her, her body language is just weird. Her tone is a little bit off. It's just, there's nothing wrong with what she's saying. It's just how she's saying it. That includes her body language. I really like this picture, like this screenshot. It's beautiful. Oh yeah. I think it's a drawing. You can tell the kind of like paint textures in the back. But anyways, back to, back to, uh, I think it's because of, like, you know, the I'm afraid so, rather than I'm afraid so. The way she kind of drags her vowels makes it sound weird. Not our problem. Boy, that's a relief. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like that should have been us when we watched this for the first time. Just been like, yes, this show sucks, but it's not our problem. That's a relief. And just gone on with our lives. We're like Padme. We can't just stand by and let bad things happen. There you go. We're right outside your safety room. Can you get the door open? Go ahead, Jar Jar. I'm sorry, Ahsoka. Don't worry about us, Senator. We still have a job to do. I find it almost weird that Ahsoka is like, they know they're gonna die, but she's she's a-okay with it. And 
I feel like she shouldn't be acting like that because in past episodes when she was in a life-threatening situation yeah she was freaking out it's like this is a 14 year old kid i think yeah. she should be kind of upset that she's gonna die i was telling you about that youtuber five by five takes and she she was talking about um, the protagonist from She-Ra, and her name is mm -hmm. Adora. And basically, Adora has, like, a hero complex. So, she's constantly trying to save everyone, she's heaping all this responsibility on her shoulders. She thinks it's all down to her to, like, save the world. So, mm -hmm. I was thinking, because this episode might actually be a great opportunity for Ahsoka to learn how to cope with self-sacrifice. So maybe we could give her a bit of a hero complex where she's kind of trying to put on a tough front and she's like, yeah, this this is the right thing to do. But you can tell she's still scared. So Padme kind of pulls her aside and she's like, hey, it's, it's okay to feel scared. You don't have to feel like you're responsible for everyone and everything. I don't know if the hero complex would be the right addition, but I do like what you're saying where she kind of buries it. She kind of goes into a bit of denial, like that she's been infected and it's very real that she could die. And so she just ignores it. And she's like, yeah, yeah, we got to take care of those droids. We got to save everybody, blah, blah, blah. But you're right that you can see that she's still afraid. And so Padme notices and Padme takes her aside and says, you know, it's okay to be afraid. I understand. This is really scary. Stop! Don't open that hatch! <laughs> Too late. I, I do love that moment. Except for Padme's like, Don't open the hatch! I would have yeah, rather that... she just shot him. Yeah, no, the, the droid is funny, but Padme's, yeah, being stupid. <laughs> people do this more often with the droidicas. I feel like in this show alone they came up with so many ingenious techniques of how to defeat droidicas, but whenever the plot needs them to not be able to defeat the droidicas, they just conveniently forget the, these ingenious methods that they have of defeating the droidicas. So they're like, oh no, we can't do anything, it's droidicas! Ah! Yeah, it's really annoying. So would we want to have her do that in the previous episode, or...? She's a Jedi... Jedi... She's a Jedi... <laughs> She's a, a Jedi Padawan, and so the question becomes, what is she capable of, right? Like, how much do you want her to be capable of? And you need to, to figure this out for, for any characters that you give abilities. What is the range of their abilities? And, you know, at what point do those abilities grow and stuff like that, right? So that when you're planning scenes like this, you don't have this weird oh, she can't do that in the previous episode, and then in this episode, oh yeah, she can totally do that. I do like the moment where Obi-Wan shows up, and I even suggested that that's a good spot to have, like, some banter. Even though it doesn't really make sense, come to think of it, because you see him enter the bunker, and then all of a sudden, it has him entering the bunker again. Yeah, it'd probably be better to fix it in the previous episode than in this one. Yeah. I think instead of having him entering the bunker again, suddenly, with like the roof caving in, instead I would perhaps have it that he, you know, he's already in the bunker. Because there was, there was two droidicas and then one of those like other clanker kind of droids in the previous episode. So maybe he takes care of the clanker and then she does what she does here with the droid droidicas and and he helps her and then they still have that opportunity for banter and such and then here we've already established she is capable of dealing with droidicas i also wanted to point out the fact here that ahsoka's reaction to padme basically her suit 
is rendered useless by Jar Jar, because Jar Jar was an idiot. Yeah. But Ahsoka feels responsible. And that almost kind of ties into what I was talking about earlier, where Ahsoka feels responsible for everyone. But if we already had that scene where Padme kind of talks to her, then this scene doesn't make much sense. I was actually thinking that maybe that uh, the having Padme pull her aside would actually maybe work better after Padme has been infected too. I would maybe change the circumstances of how her suit breaks. I would probably have it that one of the droids causes it rather than as a result of uh, Jar Jar being stupid. But then maybe seeing Padme dying pushes Ahsoka to, to more of a... Uh, there's, there's a couple different ways you could handle it. You could either have it that, like, Ahsoka's kind of still in denial about herself, but she, you know, it's leaking out, like, her fear for herself is leaking out in how she's freaking out about Padme. And so that kind of is what uh, helps Padme recognize what's going on. Or you could have it that Padme's already been kind of recognizing things. And uh, and then, yeah, you've got Ahsoka being like, oh, it's all my fault. You know, if I just, you know, finished those droids off earlier or whatever, or more competently. And Padme's like, no, this, you know, this isn't all on your shoulders, right? There, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. But I think after Padme is infected is, is kind of a perfect time to, because they do have quiet moments later where they're all kind of talking about it. So that would, one of those moments would be perfect for having that talk between Padme and Ahsoka. I'm so sorry. Don't blame yourself. These Ooh. things tend to happen in a war zone. Wow. That's actually kind of, yeah, plays in, into what you were suggesting. I would probably keep that moment the same and then move like a deeper conversation to later rather than having the deep conversation right there. But that would definitely be used to kind of like foreshadow that such a conversation is going to be necessary. Why is she the only one who runs forward and attacks? Yeah. Everyone else is literally just standing there until she, oh, and then, oh, Ahsoka. Like, just just like, have them all run forward together yes, and they all attack, Ahsoka. or at least most of them attack. I don't know if Padme has a blaster. I don't think she does, but the clones have blasters and they can be shooting the droids. And I don't I think, think they'd have to worry about Ahsoka getting in the way either, since they're shooting up. Well, it, it has already shown that there's a bit of ricochet, right? So if you're shooting straight up and it ricochets straight back down, I mean, you could just angle your shot so, you know, to count on the uh, the ricochet. But uh, I would almost have it that Ahsoka runs up and the others are running right behind her rather than just standing there. And she pulls the droids down using the force, but then the clones shoot the droids when she she pulls them down rather than having her pull it down, cut it up, pull the next one down, cut it up, right? Like she just pulls it down and throws it back toward them. Uh, Ahsoka, I'm all right. Yeah, they're, they're all just standing there. And then it's one of those things that it's like, there's not something inherently terrible about that, but it's this trend of the show propping her up, giving her these moments to make her seem so amazing and, you know, oh, poor Ahsoka is dying. Like, that's why I want to point it out. What a waste. <coughs> With all due respect, Senta, it's what these men were born to do. I hope that their sacrifice brings us closer to peace. <coughs> it will pat me <coughs> you must believe that Ahsoka. instead of padme being like oh this is you know such a waste and then ahsoka's like oh it will matter you have to believe oh die and then there's this like crescendo of like music it was oh sorry just annoys me. I would probably switch the roles and have it that Ahsoka is really upset. Their their job is taken care of, and now all that Ahsoka has to think about as she's watching everyone die around her is 
I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Because Padme said, don't open the bunker. It's like, you know, nails in the coffin. This is my tomb. So I would definitely have her freaking out. And yeah, she's getting really upset seeing the, the clones die. And then uh, have Padme say something like, you know, it, it matters. Their sacrifice will not be in vain. And uh, have Ahsoka kind of break down. And, and that's when, that's the moment that Padme takes her aside and says, it's okay to be afraid. And um, they have that conversation where she comforts Ahsoka and lets Ahsoka be real about the way she's feeling. I think this ties into what you were saying about Ahsoka before we fixed her being a horrible example of a child soldier because she's always like a-okay with everything and she's not mentally affected in any way shape or form because she's just so amazing and this is this is making her more human this is what war actually does to children children shouldn't have to come to grips with thinking about their own death in terms of being a sacrifice for other people like it's just it's really messed up the whole situation i mean it's, it's bad enough that children have to come to grips with mortality because they they have cancer or something like that i mean it's just the world is a crummy crummy place but yeah when 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 children are being forced to be in these kind of situations because this is yeah i think we've talked about it already in our reaction videos but you haven't uploaded that far that this is still going on in areas around the world that children are being used as soldiers and it should not be happening and it's kind of one of those um difficult things to kind of talk about in in terms of, of a fictional world as a result, because it's like, okay, do we change it so that the Jedi don't use child soldiers? Or do we have them use child soldiers, but really show how messed up that is as a practice and how it screws up children and results in, in so many issues for, for them. And that's if they survive. I mean, the easy way is to just stop the Jedi from using child soldiers, but if you weren't going to do that, I think I would have it... Because at the end of Season 5, when the whole bombing thing happens, I think that's the only time that they show a, a Jedi funeral that involves Padawans. They do show other Padawans die, like um, when Savage is... Uh, going wild and i think there's an episode as well with grievous but you very rarely see padawans dying and you definitely don't really see the impact it has on other padawans and since ahsoka is the padawan we see the most you don't see it affect her i would definitely show it more that she's seen other padawans coming back to the temple in, in body bags if you will and uh that's Scary. Just to be honest though, the Jedi's treatment of children in general, even outside the war, is horrendous. And I touch on that in my TCW fanfiction. No, it's the Jedi are, are, are really a very not great organization. It's one of those things that when you watch the original trilogy, those kind of things aren't evident and then you watch the prequels and i mean you see children there but like in the case of anakin right like he was being rescued from a life of slavery so it was like a great thing for him in some ways and so you kind of attribute his circumstances to the other children you see as well that like oh no it's, it's a good thing them to be here but then yeah you, you get into it you learn more about it as the world expands and the the world building becomes more detailed and and then you learn that like no this is this is really messed up this is one of the the weird things about world building sometimes the more it grows the worse it becomes i don't know because in, in a way it's it's kind of good to to add these well i think part of the problem is that you have the jedi being the good guys and they're portrayed as being morally 
right. And so we've kind of got it in our heads. I mean, at least until I would say more recently, people have become a little more aware and vocal about the problems of the Jedi. But there's still kind of this mentality of the Jedi are 100% good because the Sith are 100% evil. And it's a very black and white kind of way of looking at things. And I feel like the original trilogy, in the sense that its story was, was more simple, its story was more black and white, good versus evil. And as the Star Wars universe has expanded, it has become a lot more nuanced in some ways and also not at the same time because then you have shows like this where again it's portraying the jedi are you know perfect and the separatists are pure evil so it's weird because there's this kind of like contradictory mentality where you know the jedi aren't good but you're still like no the jedi are good I don't even understand. It's it's confusing. I don't even know what lesson to take away from that. It's just confusing. But life is confusing. Life is confusing. Nothing matters. <laughs> Maybe it's just a, a, one of those things that, that comes about as a result of your creative work becoming vast. Because it's not just George Lucas's work anymore. So many people have asked to the story over the years and just expounded on the universe. Mm -hmm. Until Dave Filoni Every came along and trashed everyone else's work. Yes, this is true. We hate him. Yeah. Uh, moving on. By the way, your Padawan was brilliant. So again, we've we've mentioned this several times now, how they have like throwaway lines at the ends of episodes that praise Ahsoka. And this is just one more factor of their manipulation to make viewers walk away from episodes with this, oh yeah, Ahsoka's so great kind of like mentality. I'm gonna be trained. I am not training him. <laughs> Sorry, you I just did like a fantastic job today, Snips. All thanks to your training, Master. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's another probably throwaway do. line. You're right. I probably do deserve most of the credit, <laughs> but not all of it. Good thing I know you don't mean everything you say. I, I liked the banter. I thought the banter was good. So oh yeah, the banter was good. Banter. That is an actual moment of banter between Anakin and Ahsoka. And you, you see that and how different it is from all the other moments that people claim are banter. And it's just like, no, there's this huge difference between what banter really is and what it isn't. This was banter. There you go. Banter 101. So that was season one, episodes 17 and 18. And we showed how being a soldier really affects Ahsoka. And uh, it's a great way to kind of have Padme come alongside her and teach her it's it's okay to be afraid and and help her come to terms with self-sacrifice. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like, comment below with your thoughts, subscribe to catch our future content, share this with your friends, and also please consider becoming a patron to support our channel brain. Our channel. Support our channel, channel brain. brain. Please. Our brain please. Channel. We need help. <laughs> we need support. We're desperate. <laughs> Uh, maybe not desperate. If we were desperate, we would start pretending we liked Ahsoka. Next is Storm over Ryloth. Oh dear. And I think I think that's the last episode with Ahsoka in it for uh, season one. So yeah. join. Yeah, we're gonna be finishing off season one. Whoa. Welcome to part eight of our re re re. Re 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 it's a great re series. Re Be sure to uh, mm -hmm. check out all our. It's a little bit repetitive and <laughs> redundant, but you can't stop replaying it. <laughs> Storm over Ryloth. That one's a fun one. Oh, that's one of the worst ones in the entire show. A friend in need will always be the worst, but Storm over yeah. Ryloth comes relatively close i think subjectively a friend in need is the worst but like if you look at like the season five finale arc True. it's just 
awful. Oh, yeah. And it's several episodes in a row of it, so it's just like yeah, it just ridiculous. Compounds. But like, if you're just picking one episode that stands on its own, I think A Friend in Need kind of takes the cake, at least in terms of Ahsoka episodes. The Bad Batch arc is pretty bad, though. Yeah. Ahsoka level But like, bad. in terms of standalone episodes, would you say that? Because that the one with C-3PO and R2, which just kind of rips off other stories, is like pretty bad. I don't know, because it's been it's been a long time Jeez. since we saw that one. So. True. Anyway. Whatever. This is a side tangent. 